Hey, so the FDA says that cloned food is perfectly, totally safe to eat. Uh, they issued a 968-page report claiming that they now have the science to back all that up. And um, guess what else it says? Quote, if a farm animal appears in all respects to be healthy, then presume that food from that animal is safe to eat, unquote. Sure, they admitted to finding subtle genetic changes in the clones, but yeah, I guess eyeballing it works too. Meanwhile, the USDA has voiced its support for the report while also saying that farmers should maintain their moratorium on putting cloned beef and milk into the food supply. Makes sense. Hey, I know what'll cheer you up. Nah, I don't think I'm in the mood. Are you sure? It's peanut butter jelly time! Peanut butter jelly time! Peanut butter jelly time! Way yet! Way yet! You think you understand your dog? Well, Hungarian researchers have come up with a computer algorithm that classifies dog barks. And I'm sorry to say they do it better than you do. At least, slightly better. The program analyzed 6,000 dog barks from Hungarian sheepdogs in six separate situations. According to the journal Animal Cognition, the algorithm works best for identifying fight barks. That's fortunate. Um, and, and worst for play barks, which is unfortunate. Obviously, this won't be putting Cesar Milan out of his job, but it does pave the way for better research in animal communication, at least to start. Okay, so you've heard of dog years, right? One human year equals seven dog years. Uh, well, have you heard of yeast years? A new study in PLOS genetics claims a method for genetically extending the lifespan of baker's yeast. Um, after a calorie-restricted diet and knocking out two genes, uh, the little guys can live to be 800 in yeast years. The other big thing is that there's no side effects. Um, well, I mean, there's no side effects in yeast. Uh, if you knock out the same genes in humans, um, you get, quote, severe growth deficits and other defects. But we are making progress. Have anything new on my wall? Whoops, hi. Just a little, little distracted by Facebook, which I'm sure we're distracting you from Facebook. As we all know, there's a zillion people on Facebook at any one time. Well, now sociologists are finally getting hip to the fact that there's a lot of potential for research data on these profiles that we're all filling out religiously, openly, constantly. In the old days, sociologists had to gather information by recruiting people and making them fill out boring questionnaires. Now people think it's fun to fill out boring questionnaires about themselves and all their social networks are built right into. So thanks to this sea of data, sociologists might be able to help identify alienated people or those suffering from depression or suicidal ideation. Unless of course you're not on Facebook, in which case you don't exist anyway.